brother Wasim Fazvi, mashallah, he's very active in Dawah in Australia. Um, he's originally from India, he's um, mashallah an engineer by trade and he studied comparative religion full time with um, some of the leading experts in the world at the, uh, alive today from the same style as uh, the late Ahmadida Alay, and Zakir Naik and uh, brother Imran if you know them he's uh, one of their full time students he studied with them full time in India and he's uh, been active in Australia for a long time mashallah full time day someone who's uh, you know working full time for the Islamic work there. We don't want to say too much in front of his face because it's not from the etiquette to praise somebody too much, but just so we know who he is. So they recently um, organized a major conference in Melbourne, the peace conference there, was attended by um, around 20,000 people. It's the, the biggest thing of its kind that you know Australia's ever seen. So I ask Allah to accept for that. And there's many other great um, projects and Dawah work that they're doing there. So truly we are blessed uh, to have him, um, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have uh, sent him to us. Inshallah, without further ado, we'll ask him to come inshallah ta'ala and start the lecture. No, stay, stay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. It's, it's okay. <coughs> yeah, go ahead, bro. It's okay. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> Rabbil Alameen. Was salatu was salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وأحل الأقتة من لساني يفتح قالي أولكم أولا في بدء السلام الجريدينغز السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Meaning may peace, mercy and blessings of Allah سبحانه وتعالى be on all of you The subject of my evening session is القرآن the greatest miracle of all times before we go into the subject itself, let us analyze one of the hadiths of the Prophet ﷺ, where we as Muslims, we believe that on the Day of Judgment, inshallah, the Prophet ﷺ is going to intercede for us, is going to recommend for us on the Day of Judgment. Now the hadith, I'm going to mention the hadith, this is very much an opposite situation. The Prophet ﷺ on the Day of Judgment is actually going to recommend against a particular person. One category of people. It is said in the Hadith that a person will be brought to the Prophet by the angels saying that he belongs to the Ummah of the Prophet. And the Prophet ﷺ would actually step that person aside, would actually hit, you know, push him behind and would say that this is the person who is not from my Ummah. The angels would say, Ya Rasulullah, he is from your Ummah. And the Prophet would say, he is not one of us because he is the one who left the Qur'an behind. Imagine a situation on the Day of Judgment, instead of the Prophet recommending for you, the Prophet is recommending against you. And the only person, the only category is the person who left the Qur'an behind. So it is that reason that I choose this topic today. Al-Qur'an, the greatest miracle of all times, to see that what are we missing from this Qur'an, and sometimes we do not comprehend the greatness and the beauty of the Qur'an. So let us see some of the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the Qur'an, and then we will see the greatness or the miraculous nature of the Qur'an itself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an commands to us Muslims, in Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, Ayah number 110, Allah says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تأمرون بالمعروف وتنهون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is saying كنتم خير أمة that you are the best of the people to be raised ever for the human race. I say this is the greatest honor that Allah has given to an ummah altogether. Allah سبحانه وتعالى is calling us what كنتم خير أمة you are the best of the people. Let's just analyze it. You know, just now Brother Musa, he was introducing me and he said, you know, it is amongst the etiquettes that we don't praise a person in front. 
Now for me, if Brother Musa is praising, you actually feel a lot, of, lot proud about it. That mashallah, one of the you know, big du'at or one of the great persons, he's actually you know, uh, praising you. Imagine if the, if the best person on earth is praising you. Then imagine Allah, the creator of all that exists, is praising you. So here Allah is actually giving us the highest honor possible. Allah says, Kuntum khaira ummatin. You are the best of the nations. Let's take an example. You know, in a school, if there is a professor, there is a teacher, there is a lecturer or a tutor, he or she has got certain respect and honor in the school, in the university. We all respect and honor them. Then if you have the dean of the, of the department, we respect and honor the dean more than the professor or the teacher. <coughs> Why? Not because of the position, but because of the responsibility that the dean has compared to the responsibility that the teacher has. Similarly, the principal of the school or the chancellor of the school would have a higher degree of respect and honor compared to the dean or the professor. Not because he you know, has got a separate cabin of himself, but because he has got more responsibility compared to the dean and the professor. Similarly in Islam, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us the highest honor, then by default, there is going to be a great responsibility accompanied with it. And what is that responsibility? According to the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in this ayah, Surah Al-Imran, Surah number 3, ayah number 110, Allah says, أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ because you invite the entire human race to al-ma'ruf, to that which is good. And you stop people from al-munkar. And you say you are the believers of tu'minuna billah and you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the job, the responsibility that Allah gave us according to the command of the Quran. Then what is it? We invite the entire human race to al-ma'ruf and stop the entire human race from doing al-munkar. And if we give up this job, we don't do this, we are in grave consequence. We are in great trouble. Let us look at some of the ayats what Allah said. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in Surah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Surah number 47, ayah number 38, Allah said, وَإِن تَتَوَلَّوْ يَسْتَبْدِلْ قَوْمًا غَيْرُكُمْ Allah said, if you do not do the job, if you turn away from the command of Allah, Allah will replace you with another people. And this is what happened in the past, in the history. If you remember, the people of Musa alayhi salam, they were the most chosen people of Allah before Ummah Muhammad. The Bani Israel were the most beloved Ummah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And what happened? When Allah gave them the responsibility to share the deen of Allah with the others, they did not want to. Rather, they actually became very racist in the subject of sharing the deen. They did not want to share, especially with the Arabs. They looked down upon the Arab community. They felt, they thought, they put forward that the Arabs were not capable, were not, you know, worth receiving the message of Allah. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do? Yastabdil qawman ghayrakum. Replace them with the Arabs to be the people of, the, people of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What did Allah do? Allah sent the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, amongst the Arabs. And you know why Allah, till today, the Bani Israel doesn't accept Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for only one reason. That he is from the Arabs. They were waiting for Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to come from Bani Israel. Because he came from Arabs, they do not want to accept him as a prophet of Allah, although they know he is the prophet of Allah. The only reason. So what did Allah do? Replace them with the people they hated the most. Why? Because they did not do the job of Allah. So if we do not do the job of Allah, it is very much possible that Allah will replace us with another people. Then Allah says, ثُمَّ لَا يَكُونُ أَنثَرَكُمْ And they will not be like you. When Allah gave the prophethood amongst the Arabs, what did the Arabs do? They stood with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and they let the religion of Allah reach the entire globe. And they became the followers of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam so much that they were strangers before, and then they became the khulafa, the rulers on earth for Islam and for everyone else. Let us go further from here. Allah subhanahu wa taala says in Surah Tawbah, Surah number nine, ayah number twenty-four. This Surah, Surah Tawbah, starts without a'udhu billahi, without Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. All the other 113 surahs of the Quran, they begin with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. This is the only surah which doesn't start with that. The significance of that, as the scholars they point out, they say, that it is because this surah is actually after the kuffar broke the treaty with the Muslims. They actually broke the deal. And once someone breaks the agreement, 
What happens? You don't talk or you don't discuss anymore. It's a clear declaration of you know war against each other when someone breaks a deal or a treaty between the two nations. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is directly addressing the matter. And in the beginning, in the surah and surah Tawbah, the non-Muslims who broke the treaty with the Muslims in Arab in Arabia, they were being addressed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They were in the firing line. But by the time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to us in ayah number 24, it is a we Muslims who are in the fighting line. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts all the possible, you know, uh, the things that we can take for uh, our, our benefit in this dunya, or the things that we may take as excuse from doing the work of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah counts all those things in this ayah. Surah Tawbah, Surah number 9, ayah number 24. Allah says, Qul in kana abawakum. And if you have time, please go back and read this ayah. قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَا كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala counts eight categories that we may love most in this dunya parents, father and mother, brothers and sisters, family members, relatives, national people, the people of your nation the, the, the relatives that you have or the businesses that you have or the bank balances that we have or the houses that we have Allah says are these the things that you love more? Allah says, are these the eight things you love more than Allah? Can any Muslim say yes? We say we love Allah more than anything. So Allah is putting everything possible online. And Allah says, do you love these things more than Allah, His Messenger, and wajihad in fisabili, and fighting and striving in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Do you take these things more than these three? Allah says, if that is the case in practicality, Allah says, فَتَرَبَّصُوا Then wait. Wait for what? فَتَرَبَّصُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِي Until the punishment of Allah, the decision of Allah falls on you. I said this is still holding on. The if Allah punishes us in this dunya, I said this is out of the mercy of Allah that it is taking away the sins from us. But Further in this ayah, Allah puts the final punishment for us, which I say is more severe than an earthquake, is more severe than a tsunami, is more severe than one of the most severest punishments of Allah on earth. Allah says, Wallahu la yahdil qawm al -fasikin. Allah says, Allah closes the door of hidayah for the fasiqin. Who are fasiqin? The people who know the command of Allah yet do not act. The people who know the command of Allah yet do not act, Allah says to them, Allah closes the door of Hidayah. Now remember what does Allah say in another part of the Quran? If Allah doesn't want to give Hidayah to someone, no one can give Hidayah. If Allah gives Hidayah to someone, no one can snatch it away from it. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu his uncle, Abu Talib, one of the best supporters of the Prophet. As long as he was alive, no one could touch the Prophet sallallahu to kill him. But the moment he died, they actually went to kill the Prophet so the Prophet had to migrate. So Abu Talib was his uncle who wanted to support and protect the Prophet and ready to give his life. But the Prophet could not give him Hidayah. Because the Hidayah comes from Allah. If Allah closes the door of Hidayah, I say this is the severest form of punishment. And here Allah is talking about who? Not non-Muslims, not disbelievers. Allah is straightly talking to us Muslims. If we do not do the job, then Allah will actually close the doors of Hidayah for us. May Allah protect us from that situation. Amen. Let's go further. Now what do we do and how do we protect? How, what, is the, what is the actual command of giving da'wah to the people? Surah Al-Asr, Surah number 103, Ayah number 123, which just Imam Musa, he read, recited in the Salah. And I'm sure he recited because of the depth or the great meaning of this Surah. Many of us, we recite this Surah just so that you know our Salah is the quickest. <coughs> but the meaning of it is so in-depth that Imam Shafi'i rahimahullah, he said, that if Allah were to reveal only one surah, and if that was Surah Al-Asr, it would have been enough for the guidance and success for the entire human race. Three line surah, three ayat, and he says the in depth of this surah. Let's look at this surah in a quick glance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Walla Asr, by the token of time. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is taking an oath. And when Allah takes an oath, it only emphasizes the greatness of the matter. And the matter here Allah is discussing is, all human beings, Allah says, all human beings, by the token of time, by time Allah says, all human beings, they are in khasara. Now what is khasara? In, in worldly matter, if I meet an accident, I say I had a khasara today. 
if someone robs me, you know, online internet banking these days, they, they rob me $20,000, I say I, have, I had a khasara today, I was in loss. But here in this ayah, Allah is not talking about the worldly loss. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to the loss in the akhirah. And what is the ultimate loss in the akhirah? That you enter into the hellfire. And someone entering into the hellfire is the great khasara. So Allah is saying every human being is in khasara. In other words, every human being is going to go into the hellfire. That's the literal meaning of it. Every human being is going to go into the hellfire. Illa except. Now what is this Arabic word illa? As we read the shahada, the kalima that we have, la ilaha illa Allah. That's what we read, la ilaha illa Allah. What it means? There is no God except Allah. Meaning there is no possibility of God. There is no imagination of God. There is no hope of another God. Not at all. Illa. No possibility. Similarly here Allah is saying there is no possibility of entering Jannah. But the only possibility is to enter the hellfire except Illa. Now comes the condition in the third ayah. What it means is only this condition can take you to Jannah and protect you from the hellfire. If we don't fulfill this condition, that means it is Allah's promise to put us into the hellfire. That's what the surah is. Inna insana la Every human being is in loss, illa except. Now there are four conditions together. If you leave one, you still go to hellfire. You leave two, you go to hellfire for more time. You leave three, you go to hellfire for further more time. Unless you fulfill all the four, you don't go to Jannah. What is the first condition? Illa ladina amanu. Unless you bring faith. Any person, as good as they are, they might be doing all the humanly acts that they can do on earth. They don't have Iman. Where will they go? To the hellfire forever. Forever. There is no protection from that. The second condition Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts forward is amanu salihat. Do right is good deeds. Fulfill the commands of Allah and His Messenger. Whatever Allah and His Messenger commanded us to do, we do. And whatever Allah and His Messenger commanded us to refrain from, we refrain from that. But now, Amalul Salihat is the entire deen of Islam. The entire deen of Islam is actually Amalul Salihat. All the commands of Allah and His Messenger. But in this surah, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala amazingly separates two amal. Two a'mal, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala removes from amal salihat and talks specifically about that. It only emphasizes the importance of those two matters. What is the first? The third condition here? You have iman, you have amal salihat, you offer salah five times a day, you fast in the month of Ramadan, you give zakah, you go to hajj, you do all the good things. You are very good to your neighbor, you are very good to your family, your parents are happy with you, your children are happy with you, everything is done. But there's the third condition. bil haqq. We recommend one another to the truth. What is Al-Haq? Deen Al-Haq. The first, so, uh, uh, the thing uh, Imam Musa recited in the first ayah, huda wa Al-Haq. The religion of truth, Al-Haq. Unless you invite people to Al-Haq, Allah says what? You will go to the Al-Fat. And then you do Sabr because of the tribulations that came to you for the reason you were inviting people to Al-Haq. Today the problem that we all get, we haven't even invited people to Al-Haq. And if we are getting problem, you know, and every time we say to each other, Inna Allah ma sabir, may Allah, you know, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is with the, those who are sabr. I say we don't fit into the category of sabr. We are not sabr, it's impossible for us to be sabr. Sabr are those people who invited people to Al-Haq. Why did, why did the kuffar beat Bilal radiallahu an? Because he was saying, La ilaha illallah, that was the reason they did it. Why did they want to trouble the Prophet ﷺ? Because he invited them to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why did they want to, you know, uh, uh, kill Uthman radiallahu anhu, Ali radiallahu anhu, or Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu? Why? Why did they kill Sumayya radiallahu anhu? Why? Because she was inviting them to Allah and she was saying, La ilaha illallah. And she is the first shaheed of Islam. So even if you invite people to Islam and you are killed because of that, who is the first shaheed of Islam? Who is the first shaheed? Sumayya. Was she in the battlefield? Jihad was not even declared by them. But we call her the first shaheed. Why? Because she was giving da'wah and she was killed. So if you are giving da'wah and then you face trouble, that is when you are sadr. If you are not giving da'wah and you face trouble, it is like any kafir facing trouble. You know, I'm from India. We Indians were oppressed by the Britishers for 200 years. Can I call all the kuffar of India as sadrun? They don't fit in the category of sadrun because they never fulfilled al-haq. 
unless you fulfill al haq you are not a sadiq the point here is these are the four conditions if we don't fulfill all these four we will not enter the hellfire until we go through the hellfire we have to go through the hellfire and we can never enter heaven until we fulfill all these four conditions going further from there now let us look at how do we invite people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches this in the quran in surah al imran surah number 3 ayah number 64 qul ya ahlal kitab تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم الله لا عبد إلا الله ولا نشرك به شيئا ولا يتخذ بعضنا بعضا أربابا من دون الله الله says say to the people of the book the Jews and the Christians and the scholars say that this ayah is open to everyone invite everyone for what تعالوا إلى كلمة سواء بيننا وبينكم come to common terms between us and you let's talk let's discuss the commonalities what we Muslims have done is we are doing a lot of commonalities with them we are working with them we are living with them we are their neighbors we are their countrymen we are their business partners we are employed by them we employ them we have got all these commonalities and similarities we eat the same food we go to the same restaurant all this is there but the actual similarity towards which allah commanded us to invite them we have left that what is that allah na abuda illa allah that we worship one but allah we don't fulfill this we are in deep trouble let us now see how do we call people to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala further from here so Allah gives us a rule, a policy here. Now let us see what is the problem and why do we need to invite people to Allah. The only sin that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that He will never forgive is the shirk, is the sin of committing shirk, associating partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The places, the countries where we live, such as Australia and New Zealand and others, there are people who believe, more than 99% of them believe that Allah is not the Almighty God. And if they believe Allah is the Almighty God, they actually associate a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So aren't we living in the midst of the ocean of shirk where it becomes more obligatory on us to convey this message to them. We all say we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us, let us analyze our love for Allah. You know, for example, amongst the human beings, who do we love the most? Apart from Allah and His Messenger, who do we love the most as a human being? The most we love is our parents. Amongst the parents we love our mother, the most. If someone abuses our mother, what is our reaction? If you know I reach home and my mother says the neighbor abused her, what do I do? I make sure either I abuse him back or I make sure I fix him or I make sure that I put a case on him. You know, I, as I said, I originally come from India. If someone abuses parents there, you know, you make sure you actually go and fix them. You make sure you fix them. If you are weak, you hire people to fix them. You make sure that that neighbor doesn't abuse your mother again. Because we love our mother. If you say you love your father and your father says give me a glass of water, you say I can't do that. Are you loving him? You're actually falsely claiming to love. Similarly, we claim we love Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Surah Maryam, Surah number 19, ayah number 88 to 91. 